Jerry Jones telling Peter King he's never going to sell the Cowboys. How, how is that news, right? Uh, other than just I love Peter and him talking to Jerry Jones, chopping it up is always the greatest. But um, that that's he, he's a, said that many times. He says it every year when Forbes list comes out and the Cowboys are number one and they're worth six point one billion. He says it doesn't matter. I'm not selling. I, my kids are going to inherit this team. So there's no news. Uh, I'm, you know, people might be curious. Well, who wants to pay ten billion? They're paying a little over market value. There might be a time when these things slow down. Maybe not. Uh, hasn't happened yet. But uh, no, he's not going anywhere. And, and the difficult thing with that is that that's not the kind of story that really excites the fan base. I mean, <laughs> oh, good. Uh, a reminder that the Jones family will will hold on to this thing for the next 30 or 40 years um, because it has not been a great last 26 years for this team. Well, I got to be honest with you, Tim. Uh, I, I don't if I had to say the Cowboys are better or worse or less improved, if I'm going to be even generous than than the team that the, that strolled off the field with no time left and having no shot in the end zone against the 49ers. Uh, I would choose they're they're not as good. You know, you lose Randy Gregory, you trade away Amari Cooper, you re-sign Gallup. I don't know how healthy he's going to be. Um, uh, I'm I'm wondering about the wear and tear on Zeke. You know, because as soon as I saw, you know, uh, the and our schedule release show uh, week ten, Cowboys and Mike McCarthy go to to Green Bay. I'm like, when was the last time they they went there? It was Dak's rookie season. He had three touchdown passes and Zeke almost had 160 yards rushing on almost 30 carries. And I'm like, Zeke just doesn't do that anymore. I I guess it's not asked of him. I don't know if he physically can. Um, So I'm wondering if this team's better. What do you think? Oh, I don't think they're close to being better. I think the Eagles have have caught them. I don't know what what height that is in the NFC. Uh, I think the Eagles destroyed them during the draft with the moves they made, um, getting whichever player you like from Georgia. They got them both to go with A.J. Brown. And, you know, you you lose Lyle Collins and you lose uh, Connor Williams. Okay, you're going to replace him with your first-round pick. Your first-round pick's 21. He played at Tulsa, not USC. He, He led, you know, the country in holding penalties. Um your second round pick is seen as a, a, a pass rush guy who doesn't do anything else. You didn't do anything in free agency besides lose the people you mentioned. I mean, there's no reason for them to be as good. Um, they, they tend to refuse to play their best running back as much as they should. Tony Pollard. I think he's been better than Zach, Zeke, Zach, Zach, too. <laughs> he's right. Zeke and Zach for two or three years. Um, they don't want to acknowledge it because they paid Zeke money. Uh, it, it's it's just a, they have enough talent that they're going to beat Washington and New York four times, and and they'll get to somewhere in the range of ten and seven. But I don't think anybody here believes they're as good as they were when they finished the season. If 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 they do, it's 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 a miracle that I I don't I don't know how you come up with that with that equation. I had Mike McCarthy on this show after the combine, Tim, and um, he said he spoke to Jerry about uh, the comments that uh, Jerry had made at the. Um, at the Senior Bowl about Dan Quinn coming back because Dan knows what others uh, previously know, that anybody who stays here is an, uh, an assistant for as long as they did, they have a shot to be the head coach here. And McCarthy said he spoke to Jerry about all that and, and how he even spoke to Quinn before he came back saying, hey, you know, that's going to be part of the conversation here. Are we all cool with that? And it seems to me that that is no doubt a subtext to this 2022 season coming up, for sure. Yeah, yeah you have the Quinn subtext. You have the Sean Payton subtext. Uh, that is constant here. Um, coaches come here and think, I can deal with that. I will, I will not get caught up in that. Chan Gailey came in here. Uh, fine pious man thinking I'm not going to get caught up in the Cowboy stuff. And the next thing you know, he's in Wichita Falls having to lie about, you know, Michael Irvin uh, going after, I can't even think, uh, the offensive lineman with uh, with the Clippers at his throat. So, I mean, it, you, you are put in preposterous situations as a head coach here, and your power is less 
than it should be. And veteran players see that uh, going back to Dion, and and they all know it. And it's that's why, in a lot of ways, Jason Garrett was kind of a perfect head coach for here because he, I think, he understood it best. And while he deserved to go because of his playoff record, he at least knew he was the guy to take the brunt of the criticism and uh, be boring for the media and do all that. And that was the best way to do the job here. And I think Mike is already a little frustrated in having to deal with some of the things that Jerry puts in play. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.